Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. All right, welcome back. Welcome, advanced listeners, to Advanced Class 23. And here on the program today, we're going to start with a little review of what we saw in the last class, in Class 22. We were looking at because of, bebido a, because of, and comparing it to when we use simply because. For example, I, I couldn't go because it was snowing. Because subject verb. Because it was snowing. I couldn't go because of noun. Because of the snow. Okay? It took me a long time to get there because of the traffic. It took me a long time to get there because there was a lot of traffic. It took me a long time to get there because there was a lot of traffic. The lights went out because of the explosion. The lights went out because of the explosion. The lights went out because there was an explosion. Because there was an explosion. It was a powerful explosion that caused the lights to go out. There was smoke because there was fire. There was smoke because of the fire. There was smoke because of the fire. There was smoke because there was fire. He came because I called him. He came because I called him. He came because of my call. Now, sometimes the feeling is a little bit different, and depending on the case, depending on the cause, it's going to be more applicable to use one structure or the other. So, here I am kind of forcing one structure um, when maybe it wouldn't always be natural to do that. But, there's, but what's important is that if you do use because of, then it has to be followed by the noun. And if you use simply because, we use subject verb. Okay, we lost because of our poor performance. So we lost because of what? Because of our poor performance. We lost because we performed poorly. We performed poorly. How did we perform? Not very good. We lost because we performed poorly. It snowed because of the low temperature. I remember I read this one. I said this in the last class it snowed because of the low temperature. So it snowed because... What? Because it was cold. That's right. It snowed because it was cold. Yes. In Canada... it's very, I'm always talking about Canada, but it's true. It snows a lot in the wintertime. Because it's cold. Not just because it's cold. Because, well... Well, it depends on the region. Um, my area, Nova Scotia, gets a lot of snow. It gets a lot of snow because uh, there's precipitation, there's a lot of uh, moisture, it's right, right on the ocean, and because of the jet stream, the current of the air currents that move across from west to east across North America, and uh, the location of my area, um, typically a little bit above the jet stream, that moves and, uh, and and the weather is colder above the jet stream and warm and warmer below, but it causes a lot of snow. But there are regions where the weather maybe is too cold to snow, which is common in Western Canada. It's common for it to be actually too cold to snow. It's true. So it didn't work because of the accident. So changing to simply because it didn't work because. Subject verb, because there was an accident. Well, it broke. It broke because of an accident, because of the accident. So there was an accident and it broke. So it's not working. Okay? We missed the bus because of the storm. Because of the storm. So we missed the bus because there was a storm. It worked because we repaired it. It worked because we repaired it. Well, 
It worked because it was repaired. We repaired it. Okay, it worked because we repaired it. It worked because it was repaired. It worked because of, because of, I should say, if we want to use the because of structure, it worked because of the repairs. If it weren't for the repairs, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't have worked. Or if it hadn't been for the repairs, it wouldn't have worked. Okay, I couldn't tell you because there was no mobile phone coverage. So I couldn't tell you the answer. I couldn't call you because there was no mobile phone coverage. So I couldn't call you because of the lack of coverage. La falta de cobertura, the lack of coverage. There was no coverage. I lacked coverage. I didn't have it. To lack something means faltar, faltar. I'm, I can be eating a... In fact, right before I recorded, I, I stopped in the bar nearby... And I ate a piece of tortilla. This is entirely true. And the tortilla, it was one of the biggest pieces of tortilla I've ever eaten. But it lacked something. It, it was missing something. Faltaba algo. It was missing salt, I think. It was missing salt. And it was, it was very dry. And they gave me a piece of bread, but the bread didn't really... It wasn't what I needed. What I needed was maybe a bit of oil because it was very dry. It lacked something. It, it's, you could say, I, I was thinking to myself, this tortilla is missing something. It lacks something. Falta algo. It lacks something. It is missing. L L A C K S. Well, L A C K to lack. Faltar algo. Okay. It, and I wish I had some oil. I should have asked for some oil, I suppose. Anyway, let's move on. I didn't ask for oil. It's too late. Let's move on to due to. Due to the fact that, plus subject plus verb, or due to. So due to the tortilla being so dry, I couldn't eat it all. Due to the fact that the tortilla was so dry, I couldn't eat it all. Due to its dryness, I couldn't eat it all. Due to the fact that it was the driest tortilla I've ever had, I couldn't eat it all. Okay? So, we can, in, in almost any case, we can use either structure, as long as we bend it grammatically, to follow our rules of saying due to plus noun, or due to the fact that, subject plus verb. So, I was late due to the weather. I was late due to the fact that the weather was bad. So, I was late due to the weather. Now, I can also say, due to the weather, I was late. We can change the order if, you want, if, if we want. Mm -hmm. So, um, he ate a lot due to the fact that he was hungry. Due to his hunger, he ate a lot. Due to his guidance, we improved. Due to his guidance, we improved. Due to the fact that he guided us, we improved. Due to his speech, we were inspired. Due to the fact that he gave such an inspirational speech, he delivered such an inspirational speech, we were inspired. Due to the fact that he delivered such a fantastic speech, such a motivating, moving speech, we were inspired. Okay, let's move on. Expression of the day. Yeah, all right, it's time now for the expression of the day. The expression of the day today is cool as a cucumber. Cool as a cucumber. All right, relaxed. I'm not nervous. I'm cool as a cucumber. When I started recording radio shows, I was, oh, I was very nervous behind the microphone. But now I'm, well, I, I wouldn't say I'm cool as a cucumber, but I'm getting much more relaxed. I'm very comfortable with it now. But if someone is cool as a cucumber, it means they're totally relaxed. And people tend to perform better when they're relaxed. If, if they're stressed out, if they're, if, if, if they're really nervous all the time, they, they usually don't perform that well. 
but people that are cool as a cucumber <laughs> tend to yeah like a as a as a cucumber tend to perform very well so that's our expression of the day cool as a cucumber are you cool as a cucumber are you relaxed are you chilled out not worrying about a thing to be cool as a, are you are you cool as a cucumber i hope so all right let's move on we talk, I want to talk about numbers now, Num- numbers in the past. So I'm going to dictate some numbers, and then I'm going to ask you questions. So we're putting these numbers into context, which is important. Um, and, and you'll probably find that when you hear numbers on the telephone, it can be difficult, especially when you're dealing with a native English speaker, and they start mentioning numbers. It's good to be able to put them in context quickly and to understand their based on their intonation you, you can get a better understanding of the numbers remember we talk about 17 and 70 17 with the stress on the second half 17 17 and 70 70 okay so that's important. Intonation is important. Pro- clear pronunciation is very important. But listen carefully. Get out your pen and get out your paper, ladies and gentlemen, because I am going to read some numbers in context. So I'd like you to write them down and be able to answer my questions. The first one here. There were 324,546 people at the music festival. How many people were there at the music festival? There were, Abia, there were... Now, did you write this down? I hope so. At home, did you write it down? Get out your pen and paper. Come on, you got to write this down. You have to participate. How many people were there at the music festival? There were 324,546 people at the music festival. 324,546 Hundred and, hundred and, hundred and. The Bell Centre in Montreal, this is where my my hockey team, the Montreal Canadiens, my favorite hockey team, ice hockey, my favorite hockey team plays. This is absolutely true. The Bell Centre in Montreal holds 21,273 people. I'm not lying to you, it does. How many people does it hold? It holds 21,273 people. That's true. Okay, next one. 234,905 cars were on the road. How many cars were on the road? How many cars were on the road? There were 234,905 cars on the road. The next one, 654,893 people went to see the races. How many people went to see the races? 654,893 people went to see the races. The races. Very good. All right, next. 234,654 dollars was spent on tickets. Notice I say was because money is non-countable. We say it was 234 dollars. So I'm sorry, 234,654 dollars was spent on tickets. So my question, how much money? How much? How much money? Uncountable. How much money was spent on tickets? Well, $234,654 was spent on tickets. Wow, a lot of money. Okay, now album sales. Album sales. 325,653 albums were sold. How many albums were sold? Three. Did you get this number? Say it with me. 325,653 albums were sold. Very good. All right. Vocabulary of the day. That's right. You heard correctly. It is time for the vocabulary of the day. 
starting with our five words. You saw them on television today, if you watched the show already. If not, you will see them on television today on Aprende Inglés, on the Baugan Inglés 4.0. Sin duda. No doubt. Now, this is a case where I get my typical Canadian accent, and people people say, ha, 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 you have a Canadian accent. You say doubt. That's right, I say doubt. An American would say doubt, but I say doubt. No doubt. Sin duda. Not to be confused with the uh, pop rock band uh, popular in the late 1990s of the same name. Sin duda, no doubt, featuring the vocals of Gwen Stefani. Dominar. To dominate. To dominate. To dominate. Yes. Real Madrid often dominates their opponents, but not always. Okay. Referencia. Referral. Referral. Very good. Referral. Castigar. Castigar. To punish. To punish. Repentino. Sudden. Sudden. Very good. There was a sudden noise and the lights went out. Yes, sudden. Very good. All right, now let's move on to practice the conditional, the second conditional. We were practicing with the first conditional a few days ago. Now the second. If you were rich, would you retire? If you were rich, would you retire? Give me an affirmative answer. Yes. If I were rich, I would retire. If you were tall, would you play basketball? Yes, if I were tall, I would play basketball. Now, notice I always say were, not was in the second conditional. Were, not was, okay? Very important. That's a rule. Pay attention to that. If I were tall, I would play basketball. If you were German, would, if you were German, would you speak German? Yes, of course. If I were German, I would speak German. What did you say? I said that if I were German, I would speak German. If you were the president, would you lower taxes? Yes. If I were the president, I would lower taxes. Would. 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 Pronunciation. What? Very important. A little bit of pronunciation right before the end of the show. I want to practice this sound. Would. Just like madera. Would. Would. But how do you say huevo? In English, in English, well, sorry, how do you say, <laughs> I just gave it away. I said it backwards. How do you say egg in Spanish? Huevo, huevo. So we have huevo, wo, wo. It's that same sound, wo, 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 would, would, would. If I were Chinese, would I be an English teacher? No. If you were Chinese, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be an English teacher. If my father were short, would I be short too? Yes. If your father were short, you would be short too. If it were sunny, would you be outside? Yes. If it were sunny, I would be outside. And in fact, if I had more time, I would continue the program, but I don't. So we will review this tomorrow. We will carry on. Keep listening, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>